guy. He's in the Big Apple. Um, uh, well, what do we what do we say about Aaron Schreier? He works for, I believe, the world's largest commercial real estate company. Is is that true? Uh, is that true, Aaron? It depends how you measure. We're either one, two, or three, depending on a bunch of different statistics. Okay. The way I've always felt about learning is surround yourself with um, people who are already successful. Osmosis will come into effect. Listen to people who are successful. Listen to their drive, their personality, the techniques they use, the words they use, and how they use them. And uh, Aaron is one of those people. He's Manager, director of Cushman Wakefield, uh, right down there in Avenue of the Americas, right? That's right. The yeah, part of yeah. Midtown Manhattan. Yeah. So, what did I leave out, Aaron? I want to. I want to spend. Yeah, no, please. It's more accolades than I could ever dream of, Claude. No, wait, Thank wait. you very much. I got it. Wait, I have another uh, picture here somewhere. Let's see if I can find Just it. Just don't embarrass me. Don't get me in trouble, Claude. I think you're recording this. Oh, I, oh, I always embarrass people. It's it's what yeah. I it's what I live it's, for. I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, embarrassing people is, oh, that's great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I want to find that picture here. There we, there, there he is. There's his page from Cushman Wakefield. Aaron began his career in commercial real estate in 1999 when I was only 36 years old. Yeah, there's another lie. Uh, with Collier's ABR Inc., one of the pedestrian, uh, predecessors, companies to Cushman and Wakefield. He was imported, import, appointed one of the youngest managing directors in the firm's history. Mr. Schreier specializes in tenant representation, predominantly assisting international financial institutions, implement strategy, cost-affecting real estate solutions. So um, I'm going to turn the floor over. Aaron, how are you, man? What have you been doing? I'm doing, I'm doing great. First of all, Claude, I can't, I can't thank you enough for having me here today. Claude, uh, we spent a while talking about today's session, and Claude told me about how each and every one of you are so, uh, so interested in becoming better at sales, how passionate you are all about it, as it relates to sales. So I couldn't be happier uh, than spending time with you all today. And Claude, I'm grateful for you giving me the opportunity to be here. So thank you, everybody. I'm going to do one. Um, I'm going to do one. I'm going to mute everybody. Sure. And uh, then, Aaron, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Did you want to show any slides or anything like that? No. I mean, you know what, Claudia? You know, I wanted to ask maybe a couple questions before we get started. So is it possible to unmute everybody? Okay. Everybody's uh, Everybody just has to hit their little button there. We got a lot of people coming on today. Um, we, what, you know, t what, makes a great, what, makes you, what makes a great salesperson today? So it's a great question, but I want to ask one question, Clyde, if I can, to the group before I sort of talk about myself, what I'm seeing and all that stuff. Who thinks cold calling is dead? <laughs> Alex well, raised his hand. Good. Alex, think you, you think cold calling is dead, Alex? Well, not, I wouldn't say that it's dead. I would say that it's, it's vastly changed and the connotation of receiving a phone call has changed and people think you're a robot or from another country or something like that. So it's, it's automatically almost, um, there's a lot of friction. It's almost abrasive when you try and call someone nowadays. Now are folks here predominantly, thanks Alex, are, are folks here predominantly B2C or B2B? Is it a mix? What do we have here? B2C, I think majority. B2C. Okay. And I should have been clear when I asked that question. I come from a B2B world. So, um, but, but let's stay with this, Alice, because I think I appreciate you sharing that idea. Who else has an opinion about cold calling, whether it's dead or not? Marty, go ahead. I don't think it's you. dead. I just think it's miserable work. <laughs> miserable work. Okay, yeah. interesting. Like, I interesting. don't mind maybe hiring somebody to, to do that, I suppose. Um, but I, I tried it before it was, it was, I was hating life. <laughs> hating my mom, life. Okay. My mom said, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Well, Marty, thanks for that. Someone said something before about the, uh, something that positive around cold calling. Is that what I heard? Yeah, I did, Alex. Um, Dave, uh, we're having a lot of, we're having a lot of luck with it. Oh, great. Tell me about it. Uh, I, I did hire um, some help for that. They're working on a commission um, and they just set appointments and it tees me up 
uh, to talk the details and actually conduct the sale. And it works really well. Wonderful. And what do you do, Dave, exactly? Um, so we're marketing to distressed sellers. Got and, it. Uh, we're offering to buy their home. Got it. So they're calling up, they're just calling up folks in any random neighborhood? We have a targeted list. Uh, we think they're motivated for two or more reasons. Is it safe to say, Dave, that you think you're going to get some business from these cold calls? Definitely. And so what do you, go ahead, please. I was going to say, you know, we're, uh, we've warmed them up with three postcards so far, and uh, we've shifted to cold calls. So this is our fourth touch. Um, shooting for getting toward eight touches, but uh, we're on that path and, and the cold calls have uh, helped for sure. Interesting. Wonderful. Well, thanks for sharing. Anyone else that where cold calling is a part of their business or think that it's a waste of time? Cold calling is a part of my business. Uh, All right, Mr. Cash Offer, let's hear from you. <laughs> uh, I, I have a lot of success with cold calling. Um, okay. I personally... I'm not afraid. Of, you know, Claus taught me not to treat the phone like a cactus. Um, and, <laughs> you know, I have a lot of success with uh, cold calls. I do. Majority of my deals come through cold calling and I send out other marketing. But if I uh, put it up on an, an analysis sheet, uh, I would say over 80 percent of those come from cold calling. Wow. So, Mr. Cash Offer, would it be safe to say that there's a direct correlation between the amount of calls that you made and the amount of money in your bank account? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for sharing. And, and by the way, I'm not trying to be like give you a leading question here. And as you can tell by my background, maybe I'm a little bit opinionated. But before I go on, who anyone else have an opinion or an idea they can share around cold calling? It's probably a necessity in the beginning of any business because you don't have a database, you don't have, a, you don't have an opt-in warm list. So most salespeople, when they get started, they have to start with cold calls. It's a baptism of fire until they get their marketing uh, up and running and they can get more, develop more warm calls. I think that's right. I think that's right. So I, I got a statistic for today, Claude, I want to share with the group. And this is what it says. And again, this is from a B2B world. Organizations who believe cold calling, and this is, this is a recent statistic, where cold calling is no longer effective, experienced 42% less growth than those who believed otherwise. Mm -hmm. So just really quick, I wanted, and I wanted that to be sort of an entree into this discussion today about the importance of laying it all out there, because I can guarantee you that each and every one of you probably would not be on this call today if you did not believe in yourself and your ability to get more business. And I know Claude, I've known him a long time. He's helped me get from a mediocre salesperson to someone who's become a sales leader in an organization. And there are certain things that Claude has taught me through the years that I impart on my 75 plus brokers who report up to me. That is no question changing the way that, that not only the amount of money that they're making, but how they believe in themselves. And it all starts with a willingness to want to grow and learn. I don't care if you're 25 or you're 100, right? You have to have that constant desire to want to learn and grow. And quite honestly, if I could tell you like the secret why I love sales, it really comes down to this, creativity, right? Um, yes. I love, like if you ask, sure, I love dealing with people. Obviously, you know, you can probably tell I'm a people person, but I love the creativity of it. It's so much fun. And I love how technology changes. I love disruption. My favorite line in the entire world today is that cold calling is dead. Who knows why that's my favorite line in the world today? Who can take a guess why that's my favorite line in the world of sales today? Because other people are doing it. That's right. Every time that is said to people, every time a rep says that to me, I say that they're probably going to get fired and that if more people aren't making cold calls, that's just going to make my job that much easier. So look, everyone has a different opinion on this. Some of my colleagues who make a lot of money haven't made a cold call in their lives. God bless them. They come from wealthy families. Um, I've never had that opportunity, but I can tell you right now, I think at the end of the day, if if I make less money than someone who doesn't make cold calls and doesn't have that creative experience in trying to get new business, at the end of the day, I don't care how much money they have, I can guarantee you they're not as happy as I am. 
I can guarantee it. And Claude and myself both share a very, a universal truth that you have to be happy. You have to be happy. You have to love what you do. Otherwise you're wasting your time. Now look, we have people in my office who make three, four, five million dollars every single year. And I think that's amazing because you can make that kind of money in my business. But you know what? One guy in particular, he hasn't seen his family probably in 16 years. Oh. And this guy's going to die coming into the office. Now, God bless him. He wants to make the six, seven million dollars a year. And that's what's most important to him. Everyone has their own thing. I love sales because it gives me the financial security that I want. It enables me to be creative. And I have a quality of life, not as good as clock, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I haven't been in the office in a year and 10 in two months, and I'm getting paid more than 75% of my brokers because I've learned to adapt to the virtual environment that we're dealing with nowadays. And I'm able to leverage the technology to help me get more sales and train my sales force. So just real quick, I want to talk to Claude a little bit, if I can, about um, sort of what I'm seeing and selling today, if that's right with everybody, some trends that I'm seeing. Uh, I want to share some books that really, I think, are great for everyone to consider in sales. Uh, but before I do, I just want to tell you quickly, uh, I was a, a commercial real estate broker for 19 years in Manhattan, New York City. Uh, I made over 120,000 cold calls in my career. I scheduled over 1,000 new business meetings, and I've closed over 100 deals just from cold calling. Um, eventually, of course, that led into referrals, which we can talk about. I know Claude's passionate about that, as should everyone on this call be. Um, but uh, to me, uh, sales has been, it's been such a, a fantastic career choice for me, and I couldn't be happier uh, having the opportunity that I have and, and, and spending time with folks like you who are excited about it. Um, I will tell you that I, I think, go ahead, Claude, please. Um, you, you, you said two things. I just got to jump on. You talked about please, please. And creativity at some time today. Would you please tell the umbrella story? That's all my, so my only request. <laughs> I, you know what, why don't we start with creativity? Cause I think we could actually open this up to a conversation and maybe see what's working for people and what could be different. I love that so, story so much. I tell it all the time, but it, I love hearing it from the guy who had invented it. So, you know, the problem with New York, as much as I love it, is that people are jerks. They really are. And, you know, you, you, I'm sure whoever's been there or lives there, you experience it. People are uh, genuinely, they're nice, but you got to get through this huge layer. And look, that layer exists because it is the financial capital of the world. And people get sales calls all day long mm -hmm. from brokers, from insurance people, from copy machine salesmen, IT consultants, the CFOs, COOs, and CEOs I'm calling on are getting 40 to 50 inbound cold calls a day. So how the hell am I going to differentiate myself from my competition? Yes, I have to have a great, when I make that cold call, you have to come at them with something powerful, right? That's what's most important. But how do I get them to love me? As Claude used to say, how do they fall in love with you? And to me, this is also creativity and having the prospect fall in love with you are some of the most important components of the sales process. So personally speaking, and this is what Claude was alluding to, what I would do with basically anyone, uh, you have to understand in my business, commercial real estate brokerage, is anyone familiar with commercial real estate brokerage? Uh, does anyone have any friends or colleagues in that business? So, you know, we basically represent companies and huge landlords helping them lease office space. We negotiate lease contracts that are 5, 10, 15 years in length. And we get commissions that are based upon essentially the aggregate costs of that lease over the course of the term. So just to give you some understanding, if I were to do a 10,000 square foot deal at $100 a square foot, you multiply 10,000 times 100, that's a million bucks a year in rent. And what's very common in New York, at least up until the pandemic, was a 10-year transaction with that type of lease. So what you do is it's a sliding scale, our percentages and how we get paid. So on a 10-year deal, it's effectively 32% of an average year's rent. So on a 10-year deal, 10,000 feet at 100 bucks a foot, a million dollars, 32% of that is... 320. I know we got some 320. 320. So we get $320,000 commission for a deal like that. And in a market that's 450 million square feet, there's a lot of transactions out there like that. And they're not easy to get though. But I say that to you, why? Because if you did a smaller deal, 5,000 feet, it would be $160,000. 
And I don't know about you, but New York's really expensive. A lot of taxes in New York, mm-hmm. and it's only getting more expensive. Mm-hmm. So you got to do a lot of deals. But I'm saying that because those deals are important, and you got to do whatever you got to do to win that business. Now, to what Claude was saying about the umbrellas. Broker A, okay? You got one broker, email, 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 maybe a voicemail if they're not too chicken shit to pick up the phone. Okay, that's broker A. Broker B, cold call, cold call, voicemail, email, conversation. Try to get the meeting, but you can't because they said they're really busy or blah, blah, blah. We'll talk about guts in a minute, Claude, but let's just assume you don't get the meeting, but you're in this prospect's head. You got broker A who's doing the email connectivity. You got broker B who had the convo with the, with the prospect, right? You're in the prospect's head, okay? What does the average broker do then? Well, the average broker will call that tenant up again and uh, prospect again another two to three months, like the prospect said, and hope for the best. Well, what we try to do, and this is what Claude was getting at, is, okay, I had that conversation with the prospect. Handwritten note goes out to the prospect. They get a handwritten note. So you already differentiate yourself from 75% of the population uh, of the sales population out there, okay? 10 days later, pouring rain. Prospect gets to work. They're pissed off at the world. They got into a fight with their wife or their husband. The kids are pains in the asses. They get to work. Everyone's yelling at them. But wait a second. They get to their desk. And what's at their desk? A beautiful note with a Cushman and Wakefield golf umbrella. Like, not the shitty little umbrellas. Like, the real deal. If anyone's played golf, you know, some umbrellas are good and some aren't. We're talking about the high-quality material $20 umbrella. Believe it or not, it exists if you buy a hundred of them at a time. (laughs) What is a better feeling when you make a cold call, three weeks later, you drop off the umbrella and you get an email from the prospect that says, Aaron, I want to tell you, I've had a real tough day or a tough week. That umbrella made my day. (laughs) Boom, boom. Maybe you call them up the next day, you call them in four days, chances are you're going to get a coffee meeting with that prospect. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen every time, but if you do that 50 times, okay, 50 times 20 is $1,000. I don't want to diminish $1,000. That's a lot of money. But if we're talking about $150,000 fees and I send out 50 umbrellas and of that, I only get four of those deals or two of those deals talk about a, a marketing campaign that, that pays dividends to the tune of a Bitcoin investor when they invested $10 and now it's 56,000. So I say that to you, why? Because I think it's so important to get to, and Claude talks about this all the time. How do you get that emotional involvement from the prospect aside from just doing the same old shit? Part of my language, Claude, I know this is- good la- It's good important. language, the, we're all adults here. The, the same old shit that every other salesperson's doing. So let that sort of be the opening. I want to open it up to everyone now and hear about what's unique about what they do, the creativity that they bring to their sales process that is different than what their competition is doing. What do we got? Uh, Aaron, I I didn't think of myself as that different, I guess, but I guess I do a lot of those one-on-one type visits with some of the local guys here that are kind of big hitters in my real estate realm. Um, And it's able to help me to get consulting gigs with them and in turn help me push my name out there without me really trying as hard. And, um, but I I guess what I, there's a book called how to get a meeting with anyone Mm -hmm. that I I learned. And one of the things I did back then was I just started to send them like um, Christmas stockings because it was an idea from there. And it was just like, Hey, um, and put something in there and, you know, I, I'm sure that, that uh, you're on Santa's, not, uh, you've been on Santa's, Santa's naughty list, but if you want to get on his good list, give me a call. Oh, and, oh love that. And, and I, I mean, I've been doing joint venture deals with guys for the last two years, just off stupid little notes like that. Love that, like Brandon. That. Brandon, what's, where, where are you calling in from? Phoenix. Great. Great. Love that story. So the holiday gift is what I'm hearing, right? That really Yeah, that was you. one of them. I just try to, and I get different, I'm not very original. So I have to steal my ideas from books and stuff like that. So. Man, look, that, that's why we have these conversations because we're only as original as what the next person can teach us. Question yeah. for you, Brandon, how expensive are those stockings? Oh, you can get them 
and the holiday time, you get the little cheap ones for like t- 10 for a dollar. Okay. And do you think the prospect cares how much they cost? No, they just thought it was funny. No. They love that shit. They just eat it yeah. up. Love that. Who else can share a story like that? Hi, Aaron. I'm Ben. We, um, we used to, uh, we would, our openers, which I, you know, we all started there. Uh, we'd open up, we'd, we'd have to get three questions about potentially selling them our product. And in the middle of it, we'd, by the way, chocolate or peanut? And they go, huh? And what that was is we'd send them a three pound bag of M&Ms. Just wrapping those three questions. <laughs> oh my god. They're not diabetic, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that, Ben. That's great. What was the reaction just out of curiosity? Uh sometimes we'd we'd say something oh, always good. Always, I mean, we'd be you know, they'd be like, Oh my god, we go, Well, share it, you know, that's too much, share it, make friends. Uh you strike me as a nuts kind of person, you know, a lot of shtick uh, with M Ms. I love that. And how much did that cost you, those M Ms? Oh, we ordered them by the truck kind of. Worth okay. Every penny, yeah. Okay, worth every penny. What, what, what kind of commissions could you get? Were they five thousand, one thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars? Yeah, they. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was in container, in business to business. Yeah, okay. and they had to be spending about a grand a month on toner. Ink. Okay, so in the M and M's were ten bucks. Yeah, maybe. Maybe yeah, with shipping, sure. Okay. I, again, everyone talks all the time about these stocks that are crazy and Bitcoin about these returns on investment. Think about this stuff. Think about the stocking stories, right? That Brandon gave us. Think about the peanuts M and M story that Ben gave us. Who else has something that's worked for them, or maybe an idea that they're exploring that they want to try out? Yeah. Aaron. Yes. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Is this Doctor Vibe? Hey. Good morning. How are you? Outstanding and blessed to be here. Uh, Claude, always a pleasure to be in Claude's presence. And he, uh, he invited me to this. I'm really happy. Even though I'm not in the real estate field, something that I've been doing this year that really works, I've been sending video messages as cold calls. I love that. All right. Keep going, Dr. Vibe. You're on a roll. Um, so, so what I've been doing is so many people are so used to getting email, 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 text message. But when you send something, it only takes 30 to 60 seconds. It's that's personal. It. The person that's receiving it probably doesn't get that many of those things. And it's personalized to them. And so many people come and say, I love the personal message that you gave me. When can we meet? Love so it's that, something that they're not Bobby. used. So even though I'm not in real estate and I learned a lot from Claude, he always keeps me creative. That's something that I've tried this year. It's incredibly works that breaks that ice, gets that first conversation going. Love that. And Dr. Bob, what do you do? What's your business? I host, I'm media host. I do media stuff. So I host oh, interviews. Great. Wonderful. And where are you calling in from? Toronto. All right. Hey, look, what, what's the platform you use for the, uh, the, the videos? I use StreamYard. Okay. Um, I got into something called Bomb Bomb. Has anyone heard of Bomb Bomb video before? Mm-hmm. Claude, yeah. thank you, Dr. Bob. I love that. Claude, yeah, no problem. When, Claude, when was I jot around, Claude? How many years ago was that? Oh, God, 1942. I don't know. <laughs> Not that long ago. Like I was doing these videos with Claude. We used to send these out to prospects probably like 10, 15 years ago. And, you know, people were like shocked by them. And now it's even become more acceptable. And Dr. Five, how much does that, does that uh, service cost you? $80 a year unlimited. It's an and investment, not an expense. So, and then here's another thing. One of my clients, they uh, bought something from Amazon the other day and the company that they bought it from, their customer service representatives send a video asking, are you okay with your product? Are there any problems? You can contact me personally. So the video game, that's where everybody is. And it's more personal. More personal. I love that. I'm a huge, huge fan of that. Great one, Dr. Vibe. So um, what else? Anyone else? I have one more story actually to talk about this relating to bagels. But before I do, I want to open it up to anyone else. This is a great one. And Claude, you haven't heard this one yet, but this is this just happened recently. Who else has a story? Well, I've absolutely got to get somebody on a phone. And it's a really, really, it's a good deal. It's got a good return, something that's a little pricey. I'll FedEx him a throwaway cell phone. Steve, Steve, uh, say, uh, say it again. Steve, you asking a question? Yeah, I'll FedEx a throwaway cell phone. A throwaway <laughs> cell phone. Yeah. And why? What, what, what? Tell me why. So I'll get, I'll get the, I'll get the message from FedEx that it's been delivered, and I'll wait five, ten minutes, and I'll just start ringing the phone, and then ask for, the, and ask for the person I want. It always goes to them. 
forward. So, wow. Cool. That is unbelievable. How, now, but how expensive is that, though? Well, between the cost of FedEx and the throwaway cell phone at the time, the last time I did it was about six months ago. About 30 bucks for the throwaway cell phone really? and another 35 bucks for the, for the FedEx. So, that is amazing. I've never heard that before, phone. Steve, That's in my entire way. life. Yeah. This is why we have these conversations because you could you you got two ears and one mouth for a reason, everybody, right? Would you I get love that from that. a spy movie or something? <laughs> so uh, I collect junk on the side, and I went to one of my friends in Brooklyn. So I'm on Long Island. So Great, that, I love that story. That sounds like a New Yorker movie I've ever heard. It worked out well. Great. I can share I can share another one that I got from a movie. Go ahead, is, Brandon. Uh, is, um, have you ever seen the movie Hitch? I personally uh, haven't, but go ahead. So Will Smith's in it. It's hilarious. He's it's in New York, but uh, he tries to get a date with a girl by having a walkie-talkie dropped off uh, by couriered over. So now what I did, I had one of my employees run over and bring in walkie-talkies to some of the guys that I'm trying to invite to something, and then get a hold of them. And then they thought that was really clever. And then if they invite them, I have them drop something off. If they can't make it, then I have them drop something different off. I love that. So it's kind of like what Steve was saying. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Great. I want to share a quick story about bagels. Um, so, so I think, so these, these types of things are great, not just to warm people up in terms of like cold prospects, but I'll tell you where else they're great. So um, unfortunately, there's a lot of ambiguity in my business. And that's something we constantly try to fight through with our prospects. They're like, I have a couple of years left on my lease. I have another relationship. No, I'm not ready. Like we have to fight through that stuff all the time, indecisiveness. And uh, I had one young, one young rep who came up to me, he said, Aaron, I got this uh, hedge fund I'm going after there. It's like $175,000 com 